Welcome to the show, Jackfruit and Mithlesh. Super excited to have both of you. Barista champions out of India. Uh, great for this episode. Thank you so much for having us over. Thank you so much, man. It's an honor to be here. So, uh, I think starting with uh, Jackfruit, perhaps if you can g- give us a little bit of your uh, brief introduction. Uh, I'm the barista trainer at Coffee by Dibella. I curate the coffee menu for Dibella as, lo- as well as uh, train upcoming baristas. We participate in championships throughout the country. I am the 2018 Indian Aeropress champion. Uh, also trained the first female champion of India in 2019 in Aeropress. We've represented India twice in Australia and London. And uh, currently uh, training myself for the National Barista Championship. Amazing. Mithilesh, I know the coffee world needs no introduction, but others might, so please. Yeah, so uh, thank you for that. My name is Mithilesh. I, uh, I'm a coffee curator and also 2022's uh, Indian Barista Champion. Also, uh, I won the Indian Aeropress Championship, the first edition of that in 2017. And also, I run a coffee company called Cardo 7 Coffee Roasters. So, uh, yeah, that's all. it. And the National Barista Champion. Yes, for this year. Championship. You, uh, you, you, you can't just casually forget that one. Oh, no, 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 not at all. That's right over here. And also, in that, in the same year, I won the Best Signature Beverage Award as well. So, uh, those two. Great. So, digging right into Aeropress. Just want to give an idea of what the Aeropress actually is to a lot of people who may not even be familiar with the contrap- contraption. I think when it comes to coffee at home, uh, or coffee at office, the, the things that come to mind is a French press, in some cases a pour-over or an espresso pot type sort of a machine. So, uh, and please, any one of you can start, or any one of you can jump in. But if we can just explain an Aeropress in a very simple way. It is a simple device to begin with, but to a complete layman. So there are three parts to an Aeropress. There's an Aeropress brewing chamber, there's a plunger with a rubber seal, and there's an a Aeropress filter cap. And basically, it's an immersion-style brewing coffee method where you're soaking in the coffee with the water and uh, basically pressing it, uh, plunging it, and your brew time, your coffee ratios. There's a lot of science involved as well. But at the end of the day, you could brew it anywhere around wherever you want. You could brew it on the streets, you could brew it in a plane, you could brew, brew it anywhere possible. Yeah. I'd like to add on to that, like, uh, like, like, I kind of describe that as a syringe, you know, like it looks like a syringe and uh, you just, uh, you can make, as Jack would say, like you can make it as technical as possible, you can make it as easy as possible. So it has got those, uh, it, it's like a two part kind of container, you add coffee, to a certain number that is written on the side of the air press and uh, you add water, then you agitate, then you add more water and then you uh, fit it with the cap and the paper filter that comes along and you can just plunge it and uh, keep it away from milk and sugar. So that would be like a great way to uh, brew an air press and yeah, you can brew it in the airports, flights, stations, absolutely anywhere. Yeah, and it's like, it's indestructible. You get an Aeropress, it's going to last you a lifetime unless you really somehow are a destructive person and manage to uh, break it. Like, I think yeah. my Aeropress is about 10 years old now, at least. Uh, works wow. perfectly fine. And to me, the the exciting thing about an Aeropress is it is so easy to use. It, it gives you a lot of forgiveness on whether you've ground the coffee correctly or not or whether you may have may not have the right precision water temperature and stuff and the most important thing for me is it's a clean cup of coffee uh, i'm not a big fan of the french press uh, i end up saying this a lot and i don't know how many people get offended by this but to me french press coffee just sucks it's just gritty grimy not my scene but aeropress just makes things so much cleaner and easier and more forgiving than the pour over i think oh for sure for sure so i think when you said about the french press the last time that I must have used a French press was like probably uh, 2016, or 15, something like that. And once you step into the Aeropress, I think once you dive into the Aeropress, uh, there's no coming out of that. So before we actually get into recipes and how people can make really good quality coffee at home, 
to me the interesting thing about aeropress is also the whole cult and community around it like a brewer that's got cult status which is also so affordable like for me the only other cult status i can think of is having a lamor zoko at home which is an expensive affair but an aeropress anyone can get you can even get one for home one for office separately uh what has led to this and then coming on to the barista the aeropress championship right and both of you have been champions there uh for the record i've entered it twice i've been knocked out in the first round uh which hopefully i'll get some tips today uh, how to do better at that but how have both of you seen the journey of the aeropress getting evolving into such a big community thing where today aeropress the championships at least the bombay like there were some 120 people there participating which was crazy to see so you know like when you mentioned like uh, bombay having uh, 120 you know last year in nagpur there were like 63 participants so for a city like tier 2 city having such kind of cult and such kind of uh, uh, response and that to in a country where basically specialty coffee is just right now knocking on the door uh, that's phenomenal and it's a great way to actually uh, increase the market and also you know like uh, this year's champion is somebody who's from a home brewing background you know so that's a great example to uh, show that you don't need to be like a person who is completely a career oriented in coffee so that's what aeropress has actually done and you you've seen the championship since the first edition right uh, what is it that's leading like why is everyone getting into it whether it's home brewers whether it's baristas it's more accessible to everyone i mean you could go online you can check something out it's pretty it's all technology i feel and it's more easy to use it's more uh, cleaner it's way uh, i mean you could do it anywhere wherever you want and people just go see videos they want to learn how it's done it's way different than a french press and that's what attracts people that's what it is right the simplicity you're is... going to a championship you're having a beer you're competing yeah that's there was, what you do there was no beer in the bombay championship though the finals do have finals <laughs> Sure, yeah, and also I think the lockdown accelerated this thing. So in lockdown, there was a number of aeropresses that everybody combined sold. Probably that was like uh, what India must have sold in two years, you know. Uh, so in those three months, uh, the sales were like out of the roof, and so lockdown accelerated that a lot. And also, it does not need the goose neck kettle and all these things. Yeah. So that has also helped develop the entire market in that way. So let's get into the recipes bit, right? How does one go about making good aeropress coffee at home or office? And here, I want to look at a few different things, right? One could be like a base recipe to perhaps start with. Uh, how does that recipe evolve with different roasts of coffee? And then how how do you both define or come up with your uh, winning recipes? what was the changes there so full proof the basic recipe from both of you one by one that'll be great uh right so if i want to begin i would say uh i think if you want to make a very basic coffee from an aeropress uh 2 tablespoon of coffee ground coffee of course not an instant coffee but the roasted coffee uh 2 tablespoon of that just 200 ml of off the boil water pour it directly into the aeropress with your spoon stir it like 10 times cap it lock it put the paper filter cap it and then turn and plunge it down that's about it you know that's as simple as that it can get made. i mean if we can make chai at home believe me aeropress is super easy so here there's no measurements there's nothing you're nothing. saying two yeah, tablespoons I mean, Yeah, just easy, simplest form of the recipe. If you want to begin with, so I'm the one that would usually use my championship recipe daily. Like I, I'm, it's been four years, five years. I get up, I start my day. I use the same recipe day in, day out. No matter what coffee. No matter using. what coffee I get, I get the coffee. I adjust my grind size, and that is what I've been doing throughout these years. Which is, uh, so it's a 35 gram coffee dosage. which is a lot for brewing at home yeah and no matter what 
I have always used it, but I do have six fundamentals that I usually follow. It's a water to coffee ratio, which is a, a general uh, ratio that you will go to see is one is to 16. That's your standard one. Then comes your grind size. Now with the grind size, the more finer you go, your immersion time uh, usually decreases. And the more coarser you go with your grind size, your immersion time will increase. And then comes your uh, brewing time. With your brewing time, what you would do is uh, finer the coffee, your brewing time uh, decreases. Coarser increases. And then your water temperature, like if you want to have an espresso style, AeroPress or something like that, go, go up to 96, 97. If you want to brew at a lower temperature, you want to have basic you want to bypass your coffee no, no, i have to deep dive into all of these aspects give me your basic recipe first uh 35 grams coffee yeah. 150 immerse okay. immerse for a minute and just dilute with 80 to 100 grams of water cool so those are your basic recipes and you just really went into everything i wanted to talk about later uh starting with the uh grind itself right uh my my whole suggestion to everyone is that stop buying ground coffee buy whole beans and grind it yourself like that's the first major coffee upgrade you can do immediately without uh, any fuss about learning anything new as such let's talk about the grind size versus the immersion time uh, which you were getting uh, talking about so with your grind size i mean if you're good, grinding it too fine you uh increase you decrease your immersion time and if you grind it too coarse you increase uh your immersion time and what's the taste difference in both the aspects uh, if it's, it's the, the body coffee? it's the acidity it's the sweetness there's a lot of factors that are involved with it now if i'm grinding it too fine my water temperature i usually would go up to it will go up to 87 86 and if i'm grinding it too coarse as well it'll go up to 83 82 i brew at very low temperatures so if I look at your first, your, your recipe, right, of 35 grams and keeping everything consistent, water temperature consistent, only changing the uh, brewing time yeah. of coarser versus finer, what is the taste difference? Which has more acidity? Which has more sweetness? I mean, uh, it depends upon the coffee as well. Yeah. So if I usually uh, brew with, uh, with my normal coffees that I usually get, I would, uh, I would say I would go like for more sweetness because i use 35 grams of coffee i go coarse but then at the same time i'm only immersing it for a minute so that increases the sweetness to an extent it increases the acidity and at the same time the body decreases and if you were to make it finer the body would increase but yeah so would the bitterness yes okay and now keeping this principle what is the relationship with the water temperature coming in so the water temperature, uh, I mean, I'm using 35 grams of coffee. If I go to 87, 90, my coffee is just going to be better because I'm using a high dosage. And because I'm using a high dosage, I brew at 83, 82, 81 to uh, where I'm more comfortable with. And this would be if someone doesn't have a temperature controlled uh, kettle, this would be you have boiled water and how much time are you waiting? I mean, you could wait for a minute, a minute okay. or two. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Mithlesh, I don't know about you, but 35 grams in the AeroPress just scares me. <laughs> I, every time I <laughs> wonder, how is that happening? And well, I think... I'm going to start with a subscription for Jekyll. 35 grams, that means six days the coffee is out. So that's going to be a good sale. I guess. For you, it's good, right? Yeah. <laughs> uh, th this year, this year, the AeroPress Championship had a dosage limit, right? Yes. I was so happy about that. Yeah. <laughs> Eight, 18 grams, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, what is your preferred style of like dosage wise? What do you do, Mithlesh? Uh So basically, I'm a huge fan of a bypass. Be it any coffee, to be honest. So I always keep a. So I'll explain what bypass is basically. Yeah. Uh, so when you brew the coffee, uh, the coffee, the water is in contact with the coffee, right? Once you press it down, you got all the liquid form, the brewed format in your cup. So adding just 10 ml of water, 15 ml of water, hot water directly to the cup is called bypassing. So you're bypassing it, not touching the coffee. So the reason I say that I'm a huge fan is because most of the coffees, it has worked and the most sweetness it's come out. All right. It's not something which is, uh, I mean, it dilutes the bitterness and also the 
high amount of acidity so it kind of gets a very nice sweet palatable coffee uh i would say i would go for a basic 15 grams and i'd go for a three pour uh coffee and i would just three pours is basically first i'll add 60 70 ml 1 is to 3 ratio 1 is to 4 ratio according to the coffee and water and give it a stir four times uh add some more coffee give it stir eight times um then add a little bit more water and then just pack it and then plunge it so my way of brewing coffee is usually inverted so even though in my world championship i lost to somebody who brewed a regular aero press but uh, i'm not saying that it's not it doesn't taste good but i usually brew an inverted always this the other thing i wanted to touch upon uh so there are two type two basic uh, methods of brewing in aero press one is the regular method and one is the inverted method i think we can show pictures on uh, the youtube channel at least uh, for people to understand but a regular aero press is regular because that's how i think the inventor designed it until yeah. people came up with a way to invert it and change the mechanism of brewing it a little bit uh, i think both of you brew inverted yeah why is it that most people prefer inverted for me it's the immersion yeah. but if you if you, the in a regular aero press also the moment you put the plunger on top it stops the flow, it does right? stop but at the same time i can control the brew more okay be it the agitation be it the immersion i yeah. can control a lot of factors even the agitation when i uh, brew inverted i i am influencing the coffee by the amount of stirs also i make true what about you mr regular... so 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 in the regular also what happens is like there are few uh like few ml of coffee that just starts dripping down right so your yeah. control is kind of lost over there uh to compensate that yes you can do a double paper filter for sure but then while you're plunging it down you're adding more pressure onto that which is extracting more bitterness so i think i even even i would go for more control that i want to brew you know so that's why i'll go for an inverted one um uh, and you just add coffee and then the amount of stirs the amount of time you want to keep it uh the way you want it to brew i think that would be a better way not a better I way but that's my preferred way sorry I once burned myself with the inverted aero press, and then I was like, "Never again!" But that's how I brew you. as well. It sometimes gets tricky. Yeah, please. So uh, I was in Bangalore, and I had to rush to the airport, and I ran out of the aero press paper filter. This is way back in 2017. So you get those paper cloth bags, right? Yeah. Uh, it's not exactly paper cloth, but kind of a cotton. Like muslin. Yeah. Uh, uh, muslin, maybe like something, something that material. So I became an Adam Adler over there. So I kind of cut it through, made a circle, and uh, put it in the paper uh, uh, in the filter cap. And we, I was at a friend's place, and his wife had just gone out. She said, "We'll get, I'll get something for you guys to eat." We were in the kitchen, we were brewing, and I plunged it down, and poof! There was an entire explosion. The entire kitchen walls and the ceiling had coffee all over. By the time this friend's wife comes, she's like, "I was out for like five minutes, you know." So even I've had like really nice experience with that. Yeah, yeah. I, I was like, I never brew inverted again. Then I was <laughs> brewing inverted again. Uh, another interesting aspect is the filter itself, right? So the 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 traditional way is to use the paper filter that comes with it. then you have recipes that call for double filter or triple filter or, a, or one metal and one paper only metal or reusable cloth uh, how much of that filter also makes a difference it makes a huge difference so basically adding so let's divide the filters in three first of all mesh filter it is almost like it will give you a heavier body because the oils and small particles are passing through and they are in your cup it's almost like a french press then you got a paper filter and you can double it up triple it up and then you've got a cloth filter also i'm not a huge fan of cloth filters to be honest but paper filters i've used it for the coffees like look when the aeropress championship are there i always approach the championship in a way that uh, your coffee needs to be different that's about it your coffee needs to be different that's that's the entire game uh, good different for sure we are not talking about bad different but uh, in the mumbai rounds back in 17 uh, i had to use a double 
paper filter because everybody's coffee was coming out to be heavy body. So once I used like a double paper filter and grounded a little coarser, I had a little thinner cup, which was a different cup than others. So it makes a huge difference actually. What about for you and what's your preferred way? I would usually use two filters. It gives a more cleaner cup. Like I've tried it with metal filters, but at the same time, you have to go a little coarse uh, on the grind size for it. Because, uh, I mean, I've seen a lot of particles come into my coffee. Same with, uh, like I've seen Wob filters currently doing some new cloth filters for Aeropress. But at the same time, the body I felt was a little off. So I usually would go for two filters. I've actually sometimes end up reusing the paper filter itself. From that angle, it actually works quite a few times. Oh yeah, I mean, uh, yeah. for me the paper. Uh, to me, the only issue with cloth is uh, me cleaning it is like a pain. Yeah, you gotta soak it in hot water. Yeah, uh, yeah, and also I feel in the cloth filter you don't have as much as control as you have in the paper filter. Yeah, uh, I can't really pinpoint why exactly it is, but I think it's something to do with. You got a cloth filter. Some particles are stuck somewhere more, and some are not. So it's almost like channeling in a way. Uh, that's kind of my uh, observation of that. What about the plunging technique? How much time do you guys take to actually plunge? Thirty seconds. And do you have like an elbow technique? You use your hand. Just use my hand. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, so I think I, I usually go with the wrist because uh, it just presses it down straighter. Uh, when I see, I've seen a lot of people like uh, plunging it, like you know, that that glass or the container below is like expanding gradually, and you need your shields in front of you, like okay, it's gonna blast. I've seen uh, people doing it with their elbows. Yeah, yeah, yeah I've yeah. seen that also. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was asking because that elbow thing looks like quite a. I think why, why, why is the elbow? You know, there are these. Contraptions also that come. There's this wooden contraption where you put two air presses together, and you just press it down. So it's almost like a juicer, you know, like a yeah. liver that's going down. So that's also there. I think James Hoffman had done this whole episode only on AeroPress accessories, and there were some really bizarre things in that. One was like a splitter. And I can barely get enough <laughs> coffee. Over. I can barely get enough coffee over for one person. Uh, yeah. Definitely not splitting it into two. Uh, also, let's talk about recipes for uh, if you want to brew two or three cups, right? Like, what is the maximum you guys can practically brew out of an AeroPress? How many cups in in one go? Okay, so I'll start. So basically, I've done like three, uh, but then again, bypass is how I yeah. do it. Of you course, know, you kind of concentrate of it, and then you've got to bypass it with a little bit of hotter water so that. Uh, Kind of get a better, not a better beverage, but a little hotter and more palatable beverage. That's what I've done. I remember I've done it like uh, probably three, four times because there's a group who comes at Coldo often, and uh, from ten to ten thirty, they all six people drink six cups of coffees. So nice. uh, yeah, so that is the time I do it, like three cups. And what would be the recipe for this? So 40 grams in. So Jekro, I'm topping it up over there. Yeah. So 40 grams in, <laughs> and you add like uh, 80 ml of water first. So I'm kind of contradicting myself earlier when I said one is to three. Here I'm doing one is to two, but that 40 grams is going to be super fine and uh, 80 ml of water, and then agitating like 10, 12 times, and then adding another like how much ever it can fill sort of a thing. Stir a little bit more. Uh, let it sit for like a minute cap it and then inverted air press. So you need like heavy pressure on that. So I can't use, I I, I remember I had, uh, used the milk pitcher, a bigger milk pitcher because the glass wouldn't have taken that much of pressure. So, and that was also easy to split it. Uh, just for uh, people to just uh, note down these recipes in an easier way, could you just tell me the uh, grammage, uh, uh, the dosage, water and the time? Yeah, so 40 grams in, uh, slight coarser than uh, actually much coarser than a uh, espresso, lesser than filter grind size, uh, lesser than pour over grind size. Uh, add 80 ml of water, stir it 10 times, mix it up entirely. 
After 30 seconds, add another one, 110 or 100 ml of water, how much ever you can fill in the aerotris. Give it another stir like five, eight times. Cap it and then reverse and press it down. So use a metal container to press it down. And then what's the bypass? And then uh, you ultimately get a coffee, which is like uh, you take 40, 80 ml out. That means, so if you took, take 40 grams in, it's going to absorb like 80 ml of water. Uh, so 200 ml, if I'm putting, you'll get 120 ml of the coffee. So you split that in three cups, that is 40, 40, 40 ml. And you just top it up with another 140 ml of hot water in each of the glasses. Oh, that's a big uh, bypass ratio. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is, it is. So that's why you need a bigger concentrated kind of a thing. Yeah. Also, uh, don't don't even try to do it in a light roasted coffee. Uh, it won't really taste too well. Go for a little medium roasted kind of coffee. I'm not a huge fan of dark roasted, so I would always say a medium roasted coffee. What about you? Anything more than 35 grams? I would use 35, 35 but I would go a little on the finer side. And... Uh, in 15 seconds, I would pour 150 ml water, stir it for about 15 seconds, put a filter with two, uh, put two filters uh, on the cap, pre uh, press for uh, a minute, but I would immerse it for like 30 seconds at the most and dilute with 120 ml of water. So that would give you about, say, 120 and your 150. Great. This is something I've struggled with uh, because at office, it like to me at office, it's easier to do a clever dripper if more people are drinking coffee. You yeah, can do, yeah. and again, you can just do bypass and do bigger concent concentrates. Aeropress is something I've struggled when 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 too many people want to uh, drink coffee. But definitely going to try uh, these recipes out. Uh, I know you're you're doing thirty five grams on all sorts of coffees, but uh, Mithilesh, what would your take be on a light versus a medium light versus medium or dark? Like, how do you adapt your recipe uh, to the roast of the coffee? Right. So, for the light roasted coffee, I would always go for a little lesser temperature sometimes because uh, I want more kind of acidity into that. I'm not saying that a high temperature does not work. High temperature works like beautifully also for the light roasted coffees. Uh, but I usually go for like, like 85, 87 degrees Celsius. And my basic simple recipe has been like 15 grams in, 15, 1 is to 15 ratio. So 15 grams in, 225 ml of water that you want to put. But I always put 210, press it down and then bypass like 10 or 15 ml of water. That's what my approach for a new coffee would also be. And also, if I want to go for a basic cup of coffee, uh, I would go for that. Any bead light, medium dark. Are you still going to stick to your 35 grams? Oh, I would still. Okay. What about the temperature of drinking the coffee? Uh, what is your preferred temperatures to really, in, like, what's that sweet spot when you're tasting the most or enjoying it the most? I would go for a 65, 70, somewhere around that. Uh, if it's a light roasted, uh, sorry, if, if it's a light roasted, I would wait for it to reach like 50 degree approximately. That's approximately how much time after you've got the cup in your hand? Uh, a few minutes. City like Nagpur where I am, uh, in summers it will take like a long time because we reach like <laughs> 50 degrees Celsius over here. So, uh, room temperature. Room temperature, I would say, uh, should take like about two and a half minutes, approximately two and a half minutes for it to like ease down and for you to enjoy. What about you? I think I would go for like 60, 65. I love it lukewarm, but at the same time, it depends upon the coffee as well. Uh, I usually prefer a medium to dark roast. And that's what I go for. I think for me, I, I'm in a light to light medium phase right now. And the moment I brew coffee and give it to someone, I was like, do not drink it right now. Just give it two, three minutes. And every time it's like, no, it'll go cold. It's like, no, no, no. It's going to taste better. One of those things all of us do. Uh, gents, any other tips? Uh, again, I have, uh, tips for people who might be beginners, one set. And also tips for people like me who are enthusiasts who will also be taking part again in the championship next year. I mean, keep it simple. 
don't over complicate uh, brewing coffee like i've done it before in 2019 where i used a nitro flush uh, method to uh, nitro my coffee and i went to brew it and my gun failed completely and i actually lost to the champion that year and i mean yeah just keep it simple enjoy your coffee while you can go to these championships meet people have some fun and something for beginners beginners i mean uh, you could always go to the world aeropress championship website you could see all the past champions recipes make a spreadsheet out of it see what worked in every year and then go forward with it that's one thing i really appreciate about the aeropress championship that the resource on the the amount of resource they have on their website that's crazy good very helpful to anyone who's new into this because you have you have a ready repository of so many recipes to try that that's true uh, just one thing over there so uh, back in 2017 when i won the coffees that were given um, were like super dark roasted like uh, uh, they were like literally we found a third crack in that you know it was that dark roasted so i went for a chilled coffee uh, like i went for a chilled water temperature and all that uh, coming back to the point that you mentioned about the resources so uh, a lot of times people have like sent a instagram message or call and said hey you know what your recipe does not really work uh, and then when i asked like which coffee were you using so they talk about a naturally processed light roasted coffee so that is one thing that everybody needs to know like not all recipes are going to work on all coffees yeah. you know? so a lot of people who are getting into it they think how can this guy win or how can this girl win with this kind of recipe you know but uh, i mean everything is different right you cannot just recipe won't make you uh, really win like as jack root said like what works what does not work for the coffee that you have i think that will be more important for everybody to do you need to adjust your variables yeah like your grind size your water temperature a lot of factors you could use the same recipe throughout the fires but at the same time i do adjust a lot of factors well, what mithlesh what's your tips for again beginners and people who might be taking part in the next year's championship so uh, a lot of them actually first of all when you go for the champion first of all when you start brewing it at home uh, if we got one bag of coffee just keep changing one variable at a time don't keep changing like so time i mean brewing time temperature agitation ratio uh, the pressure all these things like double paper filter uh, don't get into that it, as you said mention it's a rabbit hole and you know you can just get sucked into it and get confused so just keep it simple and just change one variable at a time to figure out what helped right so i always say like imagine you get the best of the cup and you change like three four variables at a time now you don't remember what worked so that is the worst thing to do you know because you can't make that coffee again so change one variable at a time second thing when you at the championships uh first of all hope that you're not the first person to go on stage right because i was <laughs> i think you I were see. a tie breaker both the years i i was cup number 1 in this year's championship you are a tie oh breaker right God. both the years i i i had a tie breaker on both the years and speaking about like doing too much my first year i went to my own grinder went to my own water <laughs> none of that worked Course. Wow! That's right. Yeah, Look, has that's my... what, yeah. I think that's the fun of it. I would say uh, that's how it is. Like, so yeah, I was just saying that. Hope that you're not the first next time. But when you're at the championship, just make sure you keep looking at the cups that are winning and yeah. try to taste it. Try to taste it, and uh, <clears throat> that way, just figure out. So in the Bombay Aeropress Championship, for the record, I was cup number one in one way or the other. My cup literally said number one. Yep. <laughs> I think for me, one uh, other tip is as 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 a coffee consumer, is that if you're buying coffee from whichever roaster, it's always a good idea to ask them for a recipe, which could be your beginning recipe for that particular coffee for you to uh, work your way from, because. Usually the roasters would have done a decent amount of uh, tweaking on that particular coffee, and everyone's super helpful in this space. If you ask someone for a recipe, they'll definitely share. I'm sure even if they've not made one, they might just make an Aeropress and give you one recipe. 
yeah that's important because you know as consumers you're buying one bag and then if you figure out if you kind of spend your coffee figuring it out that's also a charming stage honestly but after a point of time it gets to you and say it is like just tell me what it works like you know so yeah that that's a good point of course a one cup of uh, one bag of coffee in jaykrut's case will get over in 6 days 2 3 days i guess <laughs> All right, gents. Thank you so much for thank coming so out to the show. Can I have both of your Instagram handles in case people want to reach out on anything? My Instagram is Barista Krut. Mine is Roasting underscore Hands. Mithilesh, you also have a YouTube channel. Tell us yes. about that. Ah, uh, so yeah, I run a YouTube channel. It's been a year now, and it goes by the name Mithilesh Vasilbar itself, and. Uh, Yeah, I love enjoy. I enjoy making videos and talking about whatever the practical experiences that I have in my life about coffee. So yeah, yeah, it 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 it's it's something I follow quite a bit. And whether you're an enthusiast or you're perhaps in the trade, a great resource to watch. Right. Thank you so much both for coming onto the podcast. Thank you, thank you, Anish, for having us. Thank you, Jaykrut.